Our second speaker describes himself as a serial entrepreneur and innovator, not to mention musician, actor and sundry other day jobs. What he does have is a very distinguished background in the telecommunications, computer and digital industries. He's a former director of the Serious Games Institute at Coventry University, a global leader in games-based learning, simulation and regeneration. Please welcome David Wortley. Thank you very much, Keith, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, at the, uh, the very nice uh, Scottish evening last night, Alessandro Anoni said to me, Dave, shock me, shock me. So I thought about wearing a ginger wig and a tam shanter but uh, I don't think that was what he was referring to. Um, amongst the other things that uh, I've been involved with is to act as an advisor to the EU on Vision 2020 in the area of network media. Uh, my particular area of specialism is uh, augmented reality and mixed reality and games and I want to talk to you today about um, the relevance of some of the work that I'm doing. So uh, this is the structure of my presentation. I'm going to rattle through them very quickly. I'll begin with some good news for everybody in this room. Smart growth and innovation are virtually guaranteed in the global information society. And, and this will happen um, whether we do anything, whether you do anything or not. I think this is just an inevitable fact of the world we live in today. Also, location and the concept of place is becoming increasingly important and um, intelligent locations and localised intelligence also present enormous opportunities for innovation and growth. So this is all good news for everyone in this audience. However, the bad news is that sustainability, whether it's economic or environmental sustainability, is, is one of the biggest challenges that we face as a society today. And uh, maybe provocatively, I would argue that it's unlikely that um, GIS and SDI knowledge professionals will actually be at the forefront of the most significant lo location-based uh, innovations. And I myself am a knowledge professional, regard myself as a knowledge professional, uh, and I believe all knowledge professionals, including the people in, in this room, especially those who work in a specific domain, are an endangered species under threat from the alien prosumer generation. So this is the, the guy or people like him that we have to, uh, to watch out for. So what do I mean by this? Well, we're living in a time of disruptive change. And like all previous communications rev revolutions we've experienced in history, whether it be um, the development of script, the Roman roads, the printing press, canals, railways, telephones, telegraphy, cinema or television, all of these have produced disruptive changes to society and every single one of these changes has resulted in growth and innovation. It's an inevitable byproduct of a, a new communications technology. It will happen with every quantum leap in communications technology, there will be growth and innovation. However, the, this communications revolution and the development of the internet is really completely different in its impact on the global society than anything we have ever experienced um, in the history of uh, mankind because it's created something which has been described as the prosumer. And the prosumer effect is unique uh, in our history. Never before has every citizen uh, on this planet with access to technology had the, the, the tools and the knowledge at their fingertips to be able to reach a global audience and share their knowledge and their lives. We've never experienced this as a society and it's something that we still have to fully understand. So we live in an attention economy where the key thing, whatever we're trying to uh, develop, is capturing and sustaining the attention and loyalty of the people that we want to influence. So what has my area of discipline got to do with uh, GIS and uh, SDI and innovation and growth? I want to give you a few um, uh, ideas and um, uh, a few bits of food for thought. Uh, to begin with, to, I should explain what I mean by immersive technologies. Um, I classify them very broadly in, in three areas. Video games, virtual worlds and social networks. 
Uh, the reason why these are so significant in our society, apart from the fact that they're commercially very successful, is because these are the technologies and the applications that we are choosing to spend our discretionary time, attention and money on. And these are the applications which are today most successful at engaging us, educating us, informing us and inf influencing our behaviour. Just a few statistics. Uh, you may not be aware of this, but the video games industry is significantly bigger than the movie industry and the music industry. More money is spent on video games than any form of movie entertainment, whether that's DVDs, going to the cinema, etc., or spending money on music. In the USA, there are 180 million active online gamers paying an average of 13 hours a week. And in China, it's 200 million, India, 105 million, Europe, it's 100 million, and Russia, in 10 million. Um, if we look at those, um, the, the channels to influence people's behaviour and build a sustainable society, games like Red Redemption's uh, climate change game um, was played by a million people. A game developed by a small company in London called Floodsim, in which you're invited to, be, uh, to play the role of the flood czar in the UK and make decisions about where to invest money and what to invest money in to prevent flooding in the UK. Now you might not think this would be uh, a mainstream attractive game, but over 100,000 people played that game in the first six weeks since its release. And games which uh, involve um, gamers in tackling world crises are, are very popular. Games like World Without Oil, um, e Evoke, Lost Jewels and um, Innocentive are some examples of such games. And the thing about immersive applications, um, immersive applications are actually completely changing our relationship with technology because they provide us with an opportunity to en enhance our lives, the world and our relationships. And they give us access to global networks which build personalised relationships uh, with those technologies. And these are some of the characteristics that you will find in serious games and immersive applications. I just want to touch on one or two and then go on some examples of innovation that have been delivered by, by small, small businesses and, uh, and, and individuals in your sector. Um, Naturally, you will be very familiar with, with Google Earth, but you may not be familiar with uh, Virtual Philadelphia, uh, developed by a company called Geosim, Israeli company, in which they've sought to integrate a virtual visualization, a quite accurate visualization of Philadelphia, with the real world. So if you download Virtual Philadelphia, you'll be able to navigate the city in really quite high resolution. But not only that, you will be able to interact with real world people and real world businesses in that Virtual Philadelphia. Uh, these technologies also allow us to provide uh, uh, risk-free uh, applications. So if you want to train uh, paramedics to deal with an explosion in the city centre, um, you don't blow a city centre up or you don't um, um, put people at risk. Uh, you can train people very effectively by simulating that geographic location, simulating the explosion and training the workers in a serious game. Your technologies also help with our understanding. Um, I remember being in Vancouver at um, a GIS conference um, about three years ago uh, when one of the founders of Google made a very moving presentation when he described a conversation that he had with Condoleezza Rice. Um, and he showed Condoleezza the Rice the map that you see up there with all the, uh, the flames on it. That was a visualization of the crisis in Darfur. Uh, and all of those flames are, are villages that have been burned to the ground and all of that information is provided by people on the ground. But it wasn't until Condoleezza Rice saw that imagery that she realised the extent of the crisis and took some action. It's quite a sobering thought to think that the technologies that you work with are so influential in decision making which affects our global society. 
I already mentioned the flood sim game. This is a, a screenshot from the flood sim game. Uh, I think it's still online if you want to go to uh, Google flood sim or go to floodsim.org. Um, uh, you will find this application in which you play the flood czar. If you make good decisions, you get great headlines in the newspaper. If you make bad decisions, um, you get your government minister putting his head in his hands and you see your city centre underwater. Uh, one of the serious parts about this game was that it was not just designed to engage interest in the issues to do with flooding uh, and also help the public to be more aware of the, some of the complexities of decision making in this area. It was also an information gathering exercise for the government because everyone who played this game had their choices on investment, their choices on regions to invest in uh, captured uh, and analysed uh, so that you could compare your decisions with everybody else's and also the government could see what the general perception of the, the public was to do with, uh, with flooding. Your technologies also help to build bridges between uh, the physical and the virtual worlds and this is an example of an augmented reality um, application on a mobile phone. So the technologies that you work with, the technologies that, that I work with, uh, do tick all the boxes when it comes to engaging people. And if we look at um, some of the uh, most influential effects of things like games technology, um, this is a screenshot from the Microsoft uh, Kinect game. I don't know when, whether any of you have got a Microsoft Kinect or whether your, your kids have got a Microsoft Kinect. Um, I thoroughly recommend it, but it, apart from its entertainment value, as a device, it is hugely significant in the opportunities that it will create for location-based services. But games have brought developments on our standard desktop computer like 3D rendering, image processing, broadband speed, collaboration tools, networking, artificial intelligence, pattern recognition. These have all been driven by entertainment technologies. The, the advances that we made in those areas is because we as citizens have demanded richer experiences. Here's some examples of, uh, of innovations. This is an innovation in collaboration developed by a small uh, company in Birmingham. It's called Datascape. What it does is br bring real world environmental data into a virtual world called Second Life and visualise it as a, as a globe or as a floor map. So if you're trying to tackle issues like that, you and your colleagues can actually enter this virtual control room and collaborate together whilst you're moving amongst the data. So it's a, a completely new, rich way to uh, collaborate using these technologies, and it's developed by a small company in Birmingham. Um, this, you may recollect, is the, uh, the, the prosumer. I'll tell you very briefly this story about innovation in the community. Some 12 years ago, I was fortunate enough to secure um, uh, a quarter of a million pounds for uh, a technology innovation project within my own community, a project called Community Commerce and Knowledge Network, about using technology to share um, information within the community and to harness local talent. Because I had an intuitive belief that every community has talented people um, that it never makes use of because it doesn't know they're there, and this project was designed to discover them. You might imagine my surprise as a, an IT professional with over 20 years experience uh, working in IT with companies like IBM and, uh, and British Telecom. Uh, when I, the first thing I did was to try and recruit some community champions and I typed in um, Market Harbour, the name of my town, into all the search engines and one website came to the top of that list. Uh, it was a website called Big Fern and I discovered to my horror uh, that someone had already uh, developed much of what I'd secured the quarter of a million pounds for. It was in existence and what was worse was actually that the website and the, 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 the techniques used by the developer of that website were probably better than my company could manage. It was a sobering thought to realise that um, this existed within my own community and I didn't know about it. So I faced the moral challenge by inviting the webmaster to, to come and see me to discuss involvement in the project. And this guy turned up, a guy called Frank Bingley. Um, and as he walked into my office, I, I said to him, I'm, I'm sure I recognise your face. How do I know you? He said, of course you do, I'm your milkman. And it was my milkman who'd done this in his spare time with a computer he built from spare parts. Now, I thought this guy was on a different planet, 
I thought, why me? Why, why did this happen to me? But I discovered over the years that this is the prosumer. There are millions and millions and millions of people who are taking advantage of technology from all walks of life, all spheres of education, and they are doing great things with the infrastructure and the data that professionals like you are providing. So a few thoughts to ponder as I close. Um, it's not all bad news. We do live in a very difficult time because this is something that is completely new. But I think we can learn some lessons from history. Uh, and one of my greatest inspirations is uh, Thomas Cook, the founder of the travel industry. Um, now, he um, was passionate about the temperance movement. Um, he was a social entrepreneur, a little bit like myself, um, and one day he was walking to a temperance meeting in Leicester, about 15 miles away, and he stopped for a rest, and he had this vision about harnessing the power of steam to the temperance movement. And he thought, if I can make it possible for ordinary people to travel to new places and new experiences, they will lose interest in alcohol. That was why he started the travel industry. Little did he know, really. <laughs> but his secret was, and this is key to all, um, all, all of us harnessing technology, um, is that he made it attractive, he painted the dream and the vision of travel, he made it accessible through the railway network, and he made it affordable. And today, we need to do the same with all the technologies we're involved in. A couple of closing slides, um, quotes from a couple of people, one Stuart Brand um, and the other one uh, which is from Jane McGonagall about reality is broken uh, and she is suggesting that those involved in developing games and playing games actually can have a big role in our future. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, time. I'll leave you with a quote from Robbie Burns, it will be a gift for God to see us, to see ourselves as others see us and these are a few, a few shots from my my other life, which is um, acting, theatre. Thank you.